and the momentum didn't stop there, did it? Because it carried over into the, the following season in the third tier and um, another good season. It, it, in fact, probably even more impressive than the promotion because of another playoff campaign, but this time at the higher higher level. We well, did. I mean, it was, everybody had just basically tipped us to go down. It was as simple as that. And we were, so we're still in administration receivership, maybe it was. So it wasn't as though we'd had loads to go and spend, loads of money to go and spend and everything. But we, I so say, we tried to, to fill it um, with a little bit of quality. We knew it was going to be tight. Um, and the first game of the season told us that it was Bournemouth at home. And. Bournemouth are a very good side, and we got we got beat two nil, and everybody I think then would have thought, well, that's a tough game. It's going to be, I mean, not sure how it's going to work out or pan out this season. Um, but as it was, again, we, we regrouped, and I always felt in my heart that if we could just keep the momentum going and keep to and play to our strengths, that that year we could be a good year because you knew that teams in that league would play a little bit more football and we knew if we went out and probably went with them toe to toe and try and beat them that we'd end up being relegated by Christmas so again we made we, we, we played it very very tight um, and let teams come onto us and we kept this in, on the break and we had a bit of pace up front We'd, um, we took in Hegsy. Uh, Neil Grayson had been a terrific start for the club, but however, they offered money. I just felt that Neil may struggle with the step up. Um, I knew about Carl, who was a lot younger, and they were both the same price. He played against us against Swansea. Um, and we just felt he was a sim similar kind and left footed as well, like Grayson. Um, and he'd got a big heart, so. Um, he came into the club as well and as I said before the first game Bournemouth you think we're on a hiding to nothing here but we did regroup and then I think we, I think Millwall we played Millwall in the cup and we beat Millwall at home then went to uh, Wickham and drew nil nil. but then the next two games of the one it was Carlisle away and we won 2-0 and Warsaw and suddenly like we, we got a little bit of inner belief about the division as well who we were playing and the way we played suited the players um, and it suited everybody um, and we, we just got stronger obviously we lost the odd game against a better team but cool, we were very difficult to break down and we did find that the, the teams in that division played a little bit more football didn't get the ball forward so quickly um, and had the extra touches which allowed us to regroup and we did regroup exceptionally well like we did the previous year with a, a little bit better quality going forward Um I said, and our momentum group, fair play to players. Yeah, you, you said about adding a little bit more quality to the group, but there was still that, that backbone of character. You're thinking Clarkson, Sampson, Warburton, Woodman, Brightwell, Frayne, Hunter, Peer, Parrish, Gale, Heggs. You know, there was still that, that, that spine of, of sort of mental toughness and, and, and physical strength, wasn't there? 100%. And again, we had to know, and indeed, we, we were hard to beat. But we, we were terrific in both boxes we could defend one box but we could attack the other one and set places were a big were a big play for us there's no no dispute in that um, as is still the same case today against teams who've probably got a bit better quality you've got to seize your opportunities we also had right Hunter's long throw and we could use that to good effect as well and he could hurt it like a, a corner as well and he pushed people back um, and they didn't like it and they had to go back and they had to try and defend it all the time and um, we we made it count to good effect. I said we had that pace on the break as well. So team, we, we did suck teams on. We had to sit a little bit deeper. Um, we had people like Exy who was say Exy got a pace. Big Gailey had come in as well, so he wasn't slow and he was a handful in the box. Um, but we the, the backbone of the team, then three centre halves there with Brightwell and uh, and Razor and Sammy. Um, that they were the backbone, but then you said before you had, to, you had your emergence and have your, your hunter and your parish. And let's not forget during that season as well, is uh, we lost both of them uh, to injury. Do you know what I mean? And, and Roy Hunter, who we bought him for nothing, I mean, he was perpetual motion every game. And Wimbledon, I knew Nick Arford and Terry Burton, I think he was, they were down all the time. And 
they were talking to me about maybe offering seven fifty and a million pound for him, which was a lot of money, and you couldn't have stood the lad's way at the time. But then he, he uh, Wigan, and unfortunately, trod on someone's uh, foot, uh, who moved away and, and pulled his knee and did his cruise shirt. So, bear in mind, we lost Roy in that period as well. Then Sean, I think it was against Dillingham, had a, had a double break as well. So, we lost two very influential players uh, in midfield. Um, and then James Hunt came into the team and started to establish himself with Dean Pearce. So, uh, we had our little injury problems there, which were, I think you can try, just one of those things that people get in games. And um, we missed them, but cool, did we pull together again and, and drag ourselves through it and not sulk and go on. And so those two players here and Hunt um, give us as much energy and desires as Paris and Hunter. A fantastic achievement to get to the playoffs, of course, and the the, the Bristol Rovers, the the home tie, the second leg is still a game that's talked about now with people saying it's the the, the best night they've they've had as a Cobblers fan. Obviously, the first leg was was was, was there, and it, it was three 0 to Bristol with about ten minutes to go before John Gale got what turned out to be a crucial goal back. But in, in your mind, at three 0 in that first leg, was it game over? Did you really believe when 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 John Gale scored that that was the the momentum turner? I, I couldn't believe it because all the principles that we we had, which was building of a, a strong back unit and a midfield and everything. On that day, everything went wrong and everything went out the window. Um, and afterward, I do remember Graham Taylor uh, ringing me and, and, and saying like they were away in New York or something. I think they got promoted and uh, uh, couldn't believe you. Know what I mean, we we conceded three goals. You know what I mean? Never mind one uh, away, but we went there and everything went wrong. And I'd be always two 0 down, and then just just after half time, we got to three nil. Um, but then you also knew that if we could get that one goal, it was away goals countable um, if we needed it. Um, and we threw a bit of caution to win. I, I remember keeping the, the side as it was, or the shape, till about 15 minutes to go and then saying, right, come on, we'll, we'll have a go, let's try and get a goal. Um, and we got one. And Gailey got it and it was 3-1 and I, I was fuming. Oh, God, honestly, I've never been in such a grump in all my life. But I always remember then coming off the pitch as well and the Tannoy man at Bristol Rovers um, blaring out on the, the Tannoy, Wembley, Wembley. And that was a motivation to the players as well because we kept highlighting that and saying, hold on a minute, I mean, these are, I've had up on 3-1, but these are beatable. Beatable. So what we did, I'd, I'd actually got the hump and asked questions in the dressing room afterwards. The players knew... On the day, it wasn't their day. I couldn't say they let they let us down or they let themselves down. I just think it was one of those days and Bristol on the day played exceptionally well. We were lucky, by the way, that it was still only 3-0 when we got to 3-1. Um, I think they hit the post as well and Andy, brought off, Andy Woodman brought off a couple of great saves. So we were lucky just to go back to 3-1. So at least it gave us the opportunity. But we had the lads in the next day and I had them on the, tra- them on the training pitch and we worked them. You know what I mean? And uh, worked them hard as well, especially the back four. I couldn't believe how suddenly we, 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 we'd basically give them too many clear chances and space when we never did. So we worked a lot of that and they got the ump coming in on the Sunday. But what I did then in terms of relaxing with over the road from the, the ground at, um, at six field, it was Fridays. So I made all the players go over there on the straight to the training session. I think it was on the Sunday. Um, to go over there on the, on the Sunday, I'd got them ordered out. We had a lot of platters of, of food over there. Said to the players, you're going to have a couple of drinks and everything. And then we had a couple of drinks. Then suddenly, I think you could feel they started to loosen up. And then they started to take the mick out of each other because we had such a strong dressing room. And the banter was fantastic. And suddenly, I started to wind it up a little bit and about how, people, how badly people had played. And... And, so, and, and, and every, all the banter started to come back a little bit. So then <coughs> we, left, <coughs> we left in the uh, the late afternoon, came in again the next morning, and you could feel the players, the, the tension had gone out. The players, they knew now, and the motivation techniques that were used, that they'd still got the opportunity to go to Wembley again and get promoted. Um, and they come in that, that, that night and 
I remember going in the afternoon and we went over to the Italian. I was with Kevin Wilson and Gary Thompson. I went to something to eat and Gary had said to me, we're going to win tonight, aren't we? I said, no problem. I'm so relaxed, no problem. He said, you're so relaxed. I said, we're going to win. There's no, no issue. I, I, I had such a confident feeling about it because I thought we'd got everything right. Not just me, but Dennis, Tomo, Kevin as well. We'd got everything right with the building up of the players. They were down. We built them up again. And we met them felt like they were, they were heroes and superheroes. And cool, did they go out and play like that? I mean, arguably, any time when I've played Everton and things of that nature, but that was the most charged up team I'd ever seen. And the energy they played with for 90 minutes was absolutely incredible. And it wasn't just the energy, they played as well, and they played under pressure. And uh, we deserved it. And, and that was some night as well, by the way. It, it was indeed some night. Just um, a few things about that second leg. There is so much we could talk about about that Bristol Rovers second leg. Just a, a few things. One, obviously, the first goal on the night was crucial, and I think Carl Heggs got that going from memory. Um, the the next goal, I think, even to this day, no one really knows what Ian Clarkson was doing that far forward in in the second half. Um, <laughs> and and then, but as as you say, I think that the momentum that had started to build soon after the final whistle from the first leg carried on building. And by the time we got to that Wednesday night, that second leg, the atmosphere in the ground, the players they were charged up, but the crowd were too. And the players and the crowd sort of the atmosphere and the performance fed off each other. I think they did. I mean, I think I think in, in prior to a score, I think in in Samson's hit the post um, as well. And you think, mm, is it going to be your night? Uh, then we get the first goal, and obviously we we need one. That's all we needed. And at that time, we said we we get one, we're through. It's as simple as that. We've got to keep it nice and tight and locked at the back, but we've also got to have the try and create the opportunities when they come our way. We'll put them under pressure. Um, and I remember the goal now. I mean, I can't bomb in But Ian Clarkson's never been so high in his life. <laughs> I mean, when the ball came over and he's, he's guided it in off, I think he's outside of his right foot. Um, it was fitting to be fair because I said before, A, he's a great lad and he's got a good heart like the rest of the players. But then when we get to 2 0, you think, brilliant. Now we've, we've got to keep this momentum going and we've got to keep the energy going. And we did. You know, I mean, we kept the ball at the right times. You put the ball in the right areas at the right time. We pushed the Rovers back so they were as far away from our goal as possible. Um, got to 2 0, and then um, Big Razor came in with a with a towering header from a corner, if I remember right. And at 3 0, then um, the onus is on Bristol to try and get a goal. And if I'm not, I, I can't remember them getting in our penalty area very, very often, by the way, that night. Mm-hmm. And uh, as I said before, it was fully charged. The crowd played their part. Um, and the first Wembley appearance was. And the Cardiff game was a terrific achievement. But I think this one outshone everything because of the nature of the win. You're 3-0 down um, in, a, in a two-leg game with 100 minutes to go, basically 19, 10 minutes at the end of Bristol. And we come back to win 4-0. And I'm sure that's, I don't think there's many sides have achieved that in any of the playoff games since the formation of the playoffs. So... Um, we, were, we were exceptional on that night and again it was an, another fantastic night um, one probably we didn't expect at the beginning of the year but we worked so hard to to get there and again we it was a collective unit uh, we had such a good spirit everybody was together and uh, it was terrific it was off to Wembley again 42,000 fans and although there was no fairy tale ending this time to sort of get to within one game of what is now the championship, having taken over when the club was at, at the bottom of the uh, of the the fourth tier, um, that must make you exceptionally proud to have been part of that that journey for the club. Oh, because it was. I mean, I'm, anybody who know me, I mean, like, it, it, for for me that, that period, it was like I I, I love coming to work. Um, you love to training. Uh, you'd stay there. I mean, it, it, again, we it wasn't as though like now that you've got recruitment departments, everything. There was me, Kevin, Tomo, Dennis, uh, Mike McDonald was only part time, he did the recruitment. Um a bit of the recruitment, a bit of match day analysis for us or, or team reports. We did all the work ourselves. We had to go out, we watched games, you'd be out on Monday afternoon, Tuesday, possibly Tuesday night, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday night, and then try and relax a little bit for the games and uh, 
to the game of a Saturday as well. I mean, I've, I was preparing for the next week. You know, there's an intensity about me that I, I, you know, I mean, it, it was just me, and hopefully that rubbed off on the players a little bit as well because they played, they followed that kind of intensity into the games, the way that they trained, um, and also what they lived as well. So, um, oh, it was, you don't be, not just for me, I said before, it's for the directors as well because they've been through an awful lot. And again, we did it while the club were in receivership. And I said the money, I think we were on Sky Telly, I think with about eight live games in a period of two years. You know what I mean? We'd, the two Wembleys, I think we beat West Ham as well in the Cup. We had two games against West Ham. So, uh, Watford in the Cup, I remember the FA Cup. We'd suddenly like, we propelled Northampton that we were alive as a club again. And people took notice of us. Uh, and everybody outside the football club did recognise the achievement the players and everybody had made to drag itself up from the low region, the, the second from the bottom of the well, second division, to within 60 minutes really of, of getting to the championship.